for being here to uh, today. Appreciate you coming out on Friday uh, afternoon in June. A um, number of things I want to talk about today, but first I want to start uh, by announcing that we uh, have reached agreement to extend our longstanding partnership with Nike, um, which dates back to men's basketball in 1982. And we believe it's the longest uh, school relationship that Nike has. We've done research on that. We can't find one that's longer. Uh, Nike will continue to provide footwear, uniforms, and other apparel uh, for all our sports. Uh, Nike's long been recognized as the leader in this space, as the number one brand, and obviously a global brand. The agreement benefits all 600 of our student athletes, which was very, very important to us as the number one priority. Uh, it increases product for each sport, uh, which will allow individual sports to better dedicate their resources to their operational areas, recruiting, et cetera, that type of thing. Also, as part of this agreement, we uh, secured two internships, summer internships at Nike on an annual basis. Uh, currently, Tara Ryan from our women's crew team and David Lipka from men's lacrosse. Uh, or at Nike headquarters in Beaverton. They're having a great experience out there, so tremendous uh, opportunity for our student athletes. And as we go forward, there's two of those every single year, and we'll split one um, in terms of one student, one student athlete. So we want to make this accessible to uh, the entire student body. Um, I also want to thank uh, Kit Morris, who's the Senior Director of uh, College Marketing for Nike. Uh, Kit led the negotiations on behalf of the Nike team, and. Kit was a, a consummate professional to deal with. Um, it was a lengthy negotiation. We had uh, lots of conversations, lots of meetings back and forth, but we're very, very pleased uh, with the outcome. Other things that I'd like to t uh, touch on this morning, uh, football, season ticket sales continue to be very strong. Uh, we're at over 6,800 new season tickets sold for the 2020 season. Um, our renewal rate of our current season ticket holders is over 90%, which is outstanding. Um, so we're appreciative of the support of our longtime season ticket holders, and we welcome uh, our 6,800 new season ticket holders to, uh, to Syracuse football. And I think the result in that is uh, we will have a tremendous home field advantage uh, for all six of our home games this year, and that's the goal. Other things to touch on, basketball, uh, the deadline to renew season tickets for women's basketball and men's basketball is today. Uh, we're seeing strong renewals for both. Uh, women's basketball, we have very limited courtside seats available, um, so I encourage if people are interested, they should act quickly on that. It's a great vantage point and you know, it's tremendous value um, as well. And obviously, uh, we're excited about the prospects of next year's uh, women's basketball team and obviously Tiana coming back was a great jump start to the 2019-2020 season. She'll be a top 10 player in the country. Men's basketball, uh, we've got a great home schedule. Uh, when I say great, it really is when, you know, it's Duke, uh, Iowa in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, um, North Carolina and our home opener against uh, and the season opener against the defending national champion, the Virginia Cavaliers. It's important to uh, remind our fans also that the Virginia game will be exclusively and only available on the ACC network. Uh, I'd like to remind our fans that the ACC network launches on August 22nd. I would encourage them to uh, log on to ACC, getaccn.com uh, to register uh, their support for the network and their demand for the network or to call their cable, satellite, or streaming provider and request if they don't uh, already have an agreement to carry the ACC network that they do so. Um, one of the great attributes of the ACC network will be a dramatic increase in the coverage of women's sports and Olympic sports. Um, as an example, uh, there will be 30 women's soccer games, 20 volleyball matches, and 12 field hockey uh, games on the ACC network exclusively this year. That's a 90% increase over what the ESPN linear networks dedicated to those three sports last year. So I think that uh, is, is, uh, shows the example in the commitment that, uh, that ESPN and the conference and the 15 schools have uh, to grow the profile and the brand and the exposure for Olympic sports and our women's sports in particular. 
So again, we encourage our fans to go to getaccn.com or to call their local cable, satellite, or streaming provider. Distribution agreements for the network, ACC network, are already in place with Altice, DirecTV, Google Fiber, Hulu Live TV, Optimum, PlayStation View, and Verizon Fios, and others as well. Uh, from a competition update, overall, I think we had a real strong competitive year uh, across the board. 14 of our teams uh, competed in national championship tournaments or national championship events. 12 of our teams are ranked in the top 25 uh, during the course of their season. We had 13 All-Americans, and we still may have a couple to add to that. And uh, I think in what we're most proud of is we had two university scholars, which is the highest honor an undergraduate uh, student at Syracuse can uh, be recognized with. Uh, there are 12 university scholars, and two of them were student athletes, uh, Santiti Ibangaways and, uh, and Hendrik Hilpert. Um, last uh, quick dome update, uh, we put out an announcement a couple days ago that the box office will relocate to the Ensley Center beginning on Monday. Uh, the hours are listed on Cuse.com. So we encourage fans, if they want to buy tickets in person, come to uh, the box office at Ensley Field, uh, the Ensley Center. There's free accessible parking in the uh, Manly South lot. In addition to that, you see some exterior work uh, ongoing at the Dome now to really prepare us, uh, put us in position for the roof replacement uh, program next year and the other amenities. So I think for all of us and for everyone in the community, I think there's excitement to see that project underway. So with that, I'm happy to take uh, any questions. Nico? Uh, just Morning, Nico. How are you, John? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I want to ask the football season ticket holders, they got a letter about a special announcement next week. And yep. I'm wondering, I'm asking if that's related to this Nike agreement, and obviously there's speculation when you're talking to football season ticket holders, maybe that's to the uniform of that front, wondering if that's what it is. Well, we've got, we're having an event, um, it's, for, it's for some of our longtime uh, best supporters, so donors, sweet holders, et cetera, that type of a thing. We want to thank them. We want to do an event this time of year where it's a little bit slow, but to keep the focus on football. Um, I think it'll be a fun event. It is open to the public. Um, in terms of new uniforms, oftentimes over the course of an agreement, you do see a change in, in uniforms, and I would tell you just, you know, and encourage our fans to stay tuned on that. Right. Are you willing to share anything about the length or the projected value? Um, it's, it's shorter term, Chris. You know, a lot of these deals now you see at other schools do, they're anyway from, anywhere from maybe like six to 15 years. It's a shorter uh, term than that. Um, yeah, Nike, Nike and we, we both agreed to keep the specific term confidential, so I want to respect that commitment that I made to them. Um, in terms of, you know, of the value, the, the values really is, is we focused on the product. Um, and we want to outfit, again, all 20 of our teams um, in, in the best gear possible, which we are, and uh, to make their experience uh, better student athletes. That also frees us up, again, operation, operationally within each sport uh, to allocate some dollars uh, for other efforts as well. So, you know, overall, I think, you know, we're, uh, we're pleased. Obviously, you, you mentioned how long the relationship with Nike was. Uh, or is really. Uh, how much did that factor in as far as I'm sure other apparel companies reach out when these contracts are coming? So how much did that long-standing agreement with Nike play into staying with them going forward here? Nico, I think it's, it's always our goal is if we've had a good partnership, which we have with Nike, we're always going to give the incumbent the first opportunity and the last opportunity, right? And Nike's been a good partner. So that was kind of our, our, our framework from the beginning on this. Um, and we were pleased, obviously, at the, uh, at the uh, final result and the outcome of it. Um, there are obviously there are others in this space, Adidas, Under Armour, et cetera, that type of thing. But uh, from the outset, you know, I, I stated that our number one goal is to is uh, we would like to stay with Nike, and we're and we're very pleased that we are. Stephen, how are you? Good, John. How are you Chris, doing? I forgot to ask you how you're doing too. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> Gotten better offers either in position or, or 
financially uh, and so far it's all stayed. Uh, I'm curious, how much of a factor was that in your negotiation with this extension and what does it maybe say about uh, the, the future of the program that you're keeping that staff pretty much intact? Well, I think it's, it's, to me, it's part of the overall development in building the foundation for the program is, is how you resource the program. Right, and certainly assistant coaches and, and the pool for assistant coaches are a very, very important part of that. And our goal is we want to be, we want to be competitive um, and we study the marketplace on an on a ongoing basis to make sure that we are. I think it's also, I give great credit to, uh, to Coach Babers and just the culture that he's created within the football program. Um, there really is you know, a sense of, of of family, um, there's great camaraderie. It's fun to see the assistants interact with one another. There's great respect for one another. Um, I think there's great football acumen there. They also, they're, they're consistent with the values that we have as a department and as a university. So they, you know, they stress the academic component and the academic opportunity that our football student athletes have here at Syracuse University. And that's just not, you know, that's just not talk points. I mean, that's, you know, that's real and you see their commitment to that. So I, I really, I think it's part of the overall culture that we've worked hard to develop. Part of that culture is we've got to make sure we resource it appropriately to be competitively at an ACC level. Is there a number you can put to it? You mentioned that you look at the market. Do you have a total pool or maybe even a, if there was a significant percentage increase from the previous year? Yeah, you, can, you kind of look at, you know, you kind of look at overall pools and there's some outliers in there. And you know, and the, you know, the outliers you just kind of dis discard. It's, re it's really team related, Chris, and it's, it's kind of a standard in all their agreements. Um, so it's, you know, if you're at a championship level, national championship game, you win a national championship, type, that type of thing. And it's, you know, it's not game changing, uh, but obviously every little, bit, uh, every little bit helps. We've also seen an increase in just the royalty percentage that we'll receive from merchandise um, that, we'll, uh, that we'll have on, uh, on, in the market as well. Well, I think I go back to my number one point is, is the focus of this deal was to do right for our 600 student athletes. That was the primary objective. And when there's, when there's some compensation in there, that gets invested back into each program. So the student athletes do benefit from that. We're better able to resource each program. Good. Hey, John. Hey, Steve. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great, thanks. So Yes, per, uh, specifically all uh, with basketball, um, and that's where you know that's where their brand, that's where they started, right in the college space. So, and they've got uh, you know clear leadership position there. But I think it was the um, the preference uh, from our head coaches as a group, and it was the preference uh, from our student athletes as well. I, I would never, you know, that's, that's our brand. So in my, my personal opinion is new uniforms. I would never leave that to any third party. You know, that's, you know, we, we have, some, that's our brand. If it's anything that involves our brand, not only are you gonna be involved, is we're gonna have the final sign off as well. That's just, that's how I would operate in that space. We, you know, yes, um, and, and it's something that we want, you know, we want all our colors available, and I've heard loud and clear from our fans um, that they want the orange, and I've also obviously heard that 
they're not really enamored with our current football uniforms as well. So again, I kind of use the phrase, stay tuned on that. You know, we can, you know, the deal's done, but there's still, you know, we continue to work. The, the deal's done, but you're still working for, uh, you know, day to day with Nike and a number of things. It's uh, it's pr it's product. So it's primarily products. So it's uniforms. It's practice gear. It's uh, footwear. It's apparel. Um, so it's it's comprehensive, and that's that was the number one priority going into the negotiation, and that's what we successfully achieved. Um, and then tied to that is obviously the royalty rate for licensed merchandise, et cetera, that type of thing. Um, as Chris asked about, you know, there is you know a cash component, which frankly is, is very modest um, in this, in terms of performance base, team performance base. But it's really, this deal is, is primarily a product deal, and it's centered around providing the best gear possible for 600 student athletes, enhancing their experience, and then allowing those sports to, to allocate up funds in different areas of their operation. Yeah, I don't know if it helps re you know, retain any, any coach per se. Uh, but again, I think the Nike brand is, they're the clear leader in this space. Um, the Nike brand resonates with young people. So I think it, you know, it's, it aids our recruiting efforts in some way. They're, they're in negotiations with ESPN, um, and that's where I would expect to be at this point. Their, their overall deal with, uh, with the Walt Disney Company expires later this summer. Um, I was actually at ESPN earlier this week uh, for a meeting on the network um, with the commissioner and Whit Babcock. The Virginia Tech was a, was a good meeting. Um, again, I, you know, I, I'm confident, and I think they feel confident that there's a path to getting a deal done with Charter Spectrum. It uh, has more subscribers in the ACC footprint than any other provider because um, it goes to the Carolinas as well and into South Carolina. Um, but these negotiations normally go down literally to the 23rd hour, Chris, and, and that might be the way that this plays out. But again, I think it's where our fans is you get ACCN.com or if you're a Charter Spectrum subscriber, call them and request the ACC network. And I saw this when I was at ESPN when the SEC network launched. Consumer demand really has an impact with distributors. So the consumer, our fans, they have a voice in this, and I encourage them to use their voice, uh, be loud, be proud, and they do it frequently in regards to wanting the network. I'd feel, I'd feel pretty good. I'd feel pretty good. Um, you know, it's interesting, Seth, because, you know, this is kind of the antithesis. You don't see the launch of linear networks in this day and age. So to do it, to have the agreements in place um, that I referenced earlier, I think the network's off to a, to a really, really, really good start. Um, if we can get charter spectrum, that would obviously, uh, you know, be a tremendous addition to, uh, to the lineup. But I feel good about it, and I think it speaks to the overall quality of, of ACC from an athletic standpoint. It's just not men's basketball, right? It's, you know, it's football, it's women's basketball, men's soccer, it's the best, lacrosse, men's and women's, it's the best, women's soccer. I mean, arguably, you know, the sports that ACC schools compete in, we're as good as any in the conference. Um, we had, and this is when I was at ESPN on the other side of the table, um, we had sh brief discussions on that, but that really never got into any significant detail. It was always a focus on linear. Now, what will accompany, still accompany the linear network is AC to C network extra, but you have to have the linear network to get ACC network extra. So in a sense, the last two years, our fans have been able to access ACC network extra in a sense, is a trial basis, right? Going forward, once the, the network launches, so if our charter spectrum doesn't carry the network at launch, 
you won't be able to get the ACC network extra if you're a Charter Spectrum subscriber. And there'll still be a number, a large number of events on that digital platform because obviously there's more, you know, the bandwidth. There's, there's no limit on bandwidth if you're on a digital uh, platform as opposed to a linear platform. <laughs> you, you've got a little bit of kind of background on the television side. Uh, I'm curious, how did you kind of read the cards, and then what would it mean if that were to happen? Well, Stephen, if, if it happened, it'd be fantastic for, for the community, um, for the program. Um, but we've got two road games first, so I'm, I'm going to put my Coach Babers hat on here. <laughs> is, you know, we're going against, you know, we're at Liberty, we're at Maryland. Um, you know, Maryland, the last two years, if I have this right, I believe they beat Texas um, early in the season, both home and away. Maryland always has talent. Um, you've also got two new coaching staffs. You have Hugh Freeze at Liberty. He beat Nick Saban when he's at Ole Miss back-to-back -back years with a whole bunch of trickery. I remember that because I was at ESPN. You, know, you got Mike Loxley at Maryland. Obviously, he comes most recently from Alabama. So. You know, in a sense, we have no idea what they're going to run, right, because there's nothing on tape with, with these staffs. So we've got to win our first two games. That's, that's the number one priority. If we do that, then we'll see where, where things fall. But I think uh, we need to take care of our business first. Well, Chris, and then one more. Um, maybe this is just our perspective, but I think we, usually people view long-term deals as better. So the fact that you agreed to the short-term deal with Nike, is it an indication that, that you didn't get everything you wanted or was there some kind of strategic reason to, to kind of keep it to a shorter length? Yeah, I think one of the things, Chris, is, um, you know, as we look to grow our brand, um, one of the things that'll help us in the future is we need to maintain our success in football um, because if we do so, that drives the value for, for the apparel companies. So in this, in this sense, I think we're, we're better served uh, by a shorter term deal. Okay, last question for you. Yes. Are you at all worried about the scandals that have been going on since the spring? No, well, Trish, I think anytime the FBI is in a sport, you're worried, right? Uh, you know, with men's basketball, and obviously the focus has been on, on you know, a couple of former Adidas employees. So, yeah, you're obviously concerned about that. Uh, and it's, you know, it's something that we talked a great length about with Nike. And, um, you know, that said, I'm, I, we're very confident um, in their business practices. Um, but, yes, it's certainly something that, you know, when you look at men's basketball as a sport, when the FBI is involved in your sport, that's, not, that's never a good day. Thank you, John, very much. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.